for this webinar on recent trends and technologies in computer science uh, conducted by Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Rural Engineering College, Fulkoti, in association with Tech Fortune Technologies, Bangalore. So present session is going on on introduction to artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science conducted by Ram Krishna Sir, Technical Director, Tech Fortune Technologies, Bangalore. Uh, I request Professor Shashidhar Halkatti Sir to introduce our today's speaker, Ram Krishna Sir. Sh Shashi okay. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah. Or is it audible, Vitra? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. You can go ahead. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Listen to everybody. Learn from everyone because nobody knows everything, but everyone knows something. Good, good evening to my dear students as well as all the resource person from the Tech Fortune. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome today's resource person, Ramakrishna P, the technical director, Tech Fortune, Bangalore. He is delivering a session on introduction to artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science. Sir is having eight plus years of industry experience in machine learning and artificial intelligence, expertise in building products and system solutions in automotive, wireless networks, and services in data science using machine learning and artificial intelligence techniques. Sir is interested to work with companies like IoT, machine learning, security, and blockchain space. Sir is also having passionate in building end-to-end -end systems and solution. With this brief introduction, and I again welcome Ramakrishna P. Sir to give his inside knowledge in the domain of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and data science for our students as well as the resource person, sir. I am welcome you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening, okay. everyone. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks for joining so late. I know it's a little late in the evening, but I see that there is uh, almost full attendance and uh, it's it's really good to see a lot of students uh, uh, taking interest uh, in uh, upcoming trends and all of these interesting topics that conducting for the, uh, with you for the next, through this week. Uh, and also I'd like to give a special disclaimer uh, before we start that please take care of yourself you know, during this pandemic and then make sure that you're wearing mask and not going outside, avoid going outside to begin with. And if there is emergency, you'll have to go. Uh, please wear masks and then uh, take care of yourself. Yeah. Uh, with that, uh, let's start uh, on the uh, machine learning introduction itself. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Um, I hope everyone is able to see my screen. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we are going to talk briefly about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this is going to be uh, mostly uh, a theory session uh, and then basically talking about research and then uh, how exactly machine learning has uh, uh, has been impacting uh, in you know, the contemporary world and what has happened in the past and then uh, uh, and where what is the state of the art okay so we'll probably just go over the historical facts and then uh, see how what are the advancements that have happened and what's the future of machine learning and artificial intelligence so we're going to talk about that so to begin with right so uh, uh, before we begin, uh, you'll have to understand that uh, in the, uh, with the advent of computers, uh, in fact, with the advent of semiconductors to begin with, semiconductors have been, um, I think, one of the uh, greatest discoveries, uh, you know, in in 1950s, right? So with with semiconductors, uh, you know, uh, so basically with that we we found that it just it's not just the mechanical systems that can actually be used, but in fact, you can actually build electric, uh, electronic devices uh, using semiconductors. So, so before uh, semiconductors existed, 
uh, people were still able to uh, do the mathematical calculations uh, and then build a, a computer of sorts. So I, I'm sure you would know who's the uh, founder of computer as such is Charles Babbage. And this happened in 1800s itself. So which means um, computer existed long before, but the kind of computer that we see today, uh, especially even with the smartphones that you have in your hands, uh, it's 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 definitely uh, very very different from what it existed, uh, let's say, 200 years back, right, or 100 years back. So uh, the idea here is to understand how uh, we have transitioned in terms of let's say generating the data itself and exactly what data is. Okay, so semiconductor devices. Uh, uh, are able to uh, let's say uh, transmit and hold the signals electrical signals with you know user control so basically you can uh, with a certain level of voltage uh, you can either control um, meaning hold the data for some time hold the signal for some time or rather uh, let it pass uh, with certain other uh, voltage supply so which means this exactly gives you the control to uh store the data or transfer the data as and when you need so i think that's where it started so a simple uh, npn transistor also uh, if you uh, have ever come across uh, in the basic electronics uh, will actually be responsible to let's say store or uh, transfer these electrical signals um, and i think uh, all these uh, high-end memory devices that you see today uh, whether it is a primary memory device or secondary memory device is capable of let's say transferring or holding data based on uh, the commands that your uh, uh, cpu which is the central processing unit sending it okay uh, that's how it started right so which means uh, with the advent of um, uh, semiconductors there were transistors formed from transistors there were microprocessor chips formed and then from microprocessors there were uh, you know computers form or rather you can talk about uh, personal computer getting formed so a 4-bit microprocessor then a 8-bit microprocessor and a 16-bit microprocessor all of them uh, advancing every five years if you go through the history i'm sure it's a very interesting topic to uh, you know understand and uh, do a research on also as to how the uh, advent of computers actually has happened uh, but at the same time, uh, you'll have to focus on the uh, availability of the hardware also. So, uh, which means, in fact, I'll talk about it, um, uh, you know, in a little while, that uh, somebody actually, Arthur Samuel actually coined the term machine learning or as such artificial intelligence in 1980s. And in fact, he actually built a program which can, uh, you know, run on its own also. But the challenges that existed, let's say 30, 40 years back was that the cost of hardware was so so uh, high that uh, not everybody could afford um, running these algorithms locally on the hardware or even uh, that, uh, you know, one could not actually think of purchasing a, a costly computing device and then actually run programs on that, okay? So even though the concept of personal computers started coming up, but it, it was actually very costly and then only few could afford, afford it at that point in time. Okay, so uh, uh, one, at one end, you will see that hardware, uh, you know, devices were getting introduced with, you know, computational power. Okay, with that, you will see that a lot of universities across the world were actually contributing to uh, uh, this, meaning since the hardware is, has become available and there are personal computers becoming available, people started writing these programming languages or before that there was actually operating systems introduced to um, you know control these hardwares, right? So once a personal computer is actually uh, uh, provided, somebody has to interface, like there has to be a you know middleman which can actually understand what a user is saying and then translate that information to the uh, uh, hardware device, which is a computer. And that's where I think operating systems uh, played a huge role. Uh, and then uh, a lot of open source and also proprietary technologies like, you know, Microsoft, you know, Xerox Corporation, Apple, uh, and then uh, even uh, uh, Linux Foundation, a lot of companies actually started coming in and uh, and built these you know kernels and then operating systems which can interface uh, with these hardwares. Okay, so, and there are different types of architectures. There was there was a debate on which architecture is better. So primarily, if you look at the hardware manufacturers, there was IBM, there was Intel, there was uh, Motorola, and quite a few other companies. 
uh, which were focused on you know building these um, sophisticated hardwares which is microprocessors and then memory devices and then there were companies who were actually integrating and writing softwares to actually uh, interface with these hardwares for example uh, take microsoft or uh, apple or any other company even open source linux these these were actually the firmware and software that was actually written to interface with these hardwares that were produced by the other companies and the integration of these two actually comprises of a operating uh, or a personal computer for you so personal computer as such comes with the hardware and a sophisticated software that also sits on top of it which is an operating system for you so with that um you so since you have an operating system and also hardware which understands this operating system now you have the flexibility to let's say write programs or do some do some ma mathematical calculations or in fact uh, in, you know play games or build applications so all of these uh, things actually started becoming available um and that's where i think the concept of programming languages as such also started happening right and then um, so you know in early days there were uh, pascal for, cobol fortran uh, all these uh, specifically mathematical computing languages were uh, there but then there was also uh, you know before c programming language which is the first high level programming language which was uh, you know accepted uh, industry wide uh, there were a couple of other programming languages also, which is A and B, again, built by same Bell lab laboratories. But I think C became popular just because the kind of features that it provided, uh, it actually gave a whole breakthrough in the uh, programming language world itself. Okay, so that actually was exposed as one of the, uh, you know, first uh, high level programming languages, which people accepted and then started uh, coding worldwide. So, I mean, the compilers started becoming available for different kinds of hardware and then then we have these softwares, um, uh, you know, or these companies which are actually providing the cross compilers to, uh, pro, you know, uh, uh, compile your co source code on different types of hardware. And then you can write C program, whether it is on an Intel architecture or Motorola architecture. So which means uh, regardless of who's giving you the laptop, whether it is a Dell company or let's say IBM or HP or any other company, you can buy personal computer from anyone but you'll still be able to write a C program and then compile your C program and those hardwares. That's how it started, right? I mean, uh, and then since you're able to now write the programs and then save the data, it means the, uh, the data gathering happened and then people were able to start using these personal computers and then uh, you know create programs and then create more and more programs, right? So with C, uh, you, can, you can literally think of, let's say there is parallel development happening at each front. So at a hardware level, you are seeing that there is an improvement in um, uh, you know, microprocessors. So microprocessors, you are actually talking about a single core, then it became dual core and then Pentium and then so other. So right now you will see that L i3, i5, i7, i9, all these high-end generations, right? Which are multi-core, let's say 16, 32 core, you know, laptops, uh, CPU core laptops are uh, available these days. But at that point in time, uh, let's say in 1980s and 90s, it was, you know, much, much uh, smaller, but the progress was happening, uh, you know, at a rapid pace, okay? But with all these uh, competitors uh, that are providing these hardware. So, um, at one level there is hardware improvement at one level there is operating system improvement at one level there is uh, uh, you know uh, software programming languages improvement so all of these things have been happening parallelly because uh, people were consuming all the resources that were available and then integrating them uh, to make the best use of all these technologies right and then with uh, with programming languages um, uh, you were able to actually build applications locally, right? So with local applications being built, the next thing was to actually expose them to internet. So the, the concept of internet started becoming much, much popular by the end of uh, uh, 1990. So early 2000, the, the most popular thing uh, that everyone talked about in the tech industry was internet itself, okay? So internet became started becoming available because the concept of creating small networks and then joining all these networks together uh, and to form a one uh, complex network is actually what the internet is. So internet is a, uh, you know, connection of interconnected network systems, right? So there are so many networks that are there uh, locally. So for example, your uh, college could actually create one network and then that network, that network can actually talk to a sister network in other college, or there could you think of it like this way. So there are all, there are at least 200, 300 VTU colleges within Karnataka or even more. Uh, but all of these colleges can talk to each other while the hardware actually sits in the local campus. 
you can still ping and then talk to a system in a, you know another college from other location okay now how is it possible because there are you know hardware devices that can understand i don't know how many of you have actually gone through the osi architecture which is open system interconnect model which talks about how you can actually uh, send the data and then receive the data on both these ends so uh, uh, so to, to short you know to reduce the uh, you know complexity i can simply say that uh, let's say there is hardware software and all the uh, necessary interfaces uh, that were made available uh, in the you know computer networking world and that's how the internet started becoming available okay which is of course not the you know interest of the topic but i'm just trying to give the background before we get into machine learning you'll have to understand where we come from okay so now that you have all of these things you have hardware you have software you have programming languages and then you have internet so with internet uh, a lot of companies started hosting their applications right so uh, you know to, to start with uh, banking applications or even government based you know application you know uh, applications that people can use citizens can use and then college universities hosting their applications and then people actually like uh, e-commerce platforms social media all of these started you know becoming available on these internet based platforms so you now uh, people who are actually going to bank physically to get a trans transaction done so let's say if i have to deposit money or transfer money uh, without internet people would really go to banks physically with a passbook and then actually transfer get the transfer uh, of this money done but now that you have uh, a internet portal open on at you know at your uh, home on your personal computer all you have to do is just log into this portal and then uh, you know authenticate that you as the you are the valid user and then with that you will be able to make the transaction you know sitting at home uh, from your own account to somebody else's account okay so which means uh, the transaction is still the same okay uh, and then it's it's still you know the same procedure except that you are not physically going there but doing it remotely and this actually opened up to a lot of opportunities with the advent of internet uh, people started uh creating almost every kind of application that uh, you know were, were becoming available was because of the internet okay and then of course with internet then there then there are front end systems which are actually you know web based applications that you are actually opening up, you know, up in the browser versus there are desktop based applications which are building locally on the systems okay so for example a simple example to talk about is let's say microsoft word or powerpoint or uh, uh a notepad or any other application that microsoft office provides you is actually a desktop based application versus uh, let's say a social media or a banking portal or anything that you do on the internet these days on the web browser is actually a browser based application so typically your google chrome firefox internet explorer uh, all of these are um, uh, web browsers which are actually giving you the access to uh, execute an application which is running remotely not locally versus Uh, your my uh, microsoft word or powerpoint is actually running locally and that's giving you the access to run the local application or execute something on the local application on your own hardware so uh now the point is why are we talking about all of this because it's important to understand uh with with all of these applications you know becoming available people started consuming these applications and people started using these applications heavily so for example now that uh, a banking uh, let's say if i am a xyz bank okay and then if i am providing internet based solution uh, to uh, create your accounts and then manage your accounts on the internet and you don't have to come physically to the bank uh, at least let's say maybe you have to come once a year to you know uh, to authenticate that you exist but otherwise all the transactions can be still made online okay so if that feature is provided imagine the number of customers joining you know my bank okay so that is how it started actually happening that everyone was providing all, and then internet has the the basic premise of internet was has always been that it should be provided uh, for free and then you will be paying you know only for the services that you use so which means uh, Uh, most of the you know social media and other applications also typically you don't actually pay for it right you only pay for the you know uh, internet services whoever is providing but once you are on the internet you are not paying for any website to visit right so uh, you know for the most part okay so that's how it started and then with this the j- data generation actually started with, you know uh, you know becoming at rapid pace since there is so much data being available now now people started exploring that there is so much data available why not just go through this data and then 
take some inferences of it like for example there are billions of transactions happening every day so there are at least if i take the current example as of today uh, there are almost 1000 crore transactions or upi based transactions so uh, all the paytm phone pay google pay anything that you do these days all of these are let's say upi based transactions and uh, roughly uh, the government of india is providing that uh, that number that at least 1000 crore transactions happen every single month okay and i think it has actually only increased in, during this pandemic because nobody is actually withdrawing the cash but they are doing mostly online okay so which means if there are 1000 crore transactions happening every month imagine there are at least uh, thousands or lakhs of transactions happening every minute or every second so which means all these transactions that are happening will have to uh, uh, also make sure that uh, the transaction from a to b is actually happening securely and then can we also predict can we know that how many transactions will happen and what kind of transactions will happen and how can we store this effectively so for all of this you would want an intuitive approach so if you know beforehand what's going to happen that will give you better advantage to prepare and then handle that circumstances much much better way i think that is the whole premise of machine learning and then we'll come to artificial intelligence of course but to begin with let's understand what machine learning is so machine learning is let's say you have the training data which is the data is already available to you and it is telling you what has happened in the past okay how the transactions have happened or let's say how um, uh, the weather forecast has or how the weather has been or how the pandemic scenario has been okay so even the in this current scenario even the predictions that are that you are seeing that let's say government or all these medical bodies actually keep telling that there is going to be a peak in next two weeks or peak in next three weeks how are they able to predict that is because of the data they have seen that in different countries how the rise of the cases actually you know are there and then that it is it is going to a peak and then once after the lockdown or let's say different measures taken by the local government bodies and the pe- public there there is going to be a fall in the number of cases okay so this is a pattern that exists you know and then it, it's almost uh, happening everywhere and that's how uh, you know one is able to actually also mention uh, the fact that this is how it's going to be so you learn from the data typically the computers learn from the data what's already happening in the what's already happened in the past and then uh, learn the intelligence basically identify what part, kind of a pattern it is and then try to build that or predict for that pattern in the future okay so that's the uh, core concept of machine learning and so which means machine learning mostly is focused on the predictions based on the data okay whereas artificial in- intelligence is actually a broader concept so artificial intelligence encompasses machine learning okay and artificial intelligence is basically focusing on actions based on the uh, you know a past uh, incidents so artificial intelligence focuses on the actions part whereas machine learning focuses on the predictions part okay based on the data uh, in fact we will deep uh, do a do a deep dive uh, shortly into this so to begin with uh, with that understanding so let's talk about now the machine learning itself so what is machine learning well uh, it, the concept itself was actually coined by arthur samuel first uh, okay in 1959 itself he in fact wrote a program to play checkers and uh, and this was actually a game which the computer would play on with itself or at least it's a game that it can automatically play and then uh, try to make moves um, you know so let's say if i am playing you know one move then it actually play the second move based on the uh, algorithm that's already fed into the system okay so which means it's able to without somebody telling the computer is automatically able to play and then sometimes win or okay it depends on what kind of level you set but it's able to win or lose the game uh, with the user okay now see one thing is the, you know certainly different from um, memorization so we are not memorizing the facts so machine learning is not memorizing the facts okay so you are not by heart so computer is not by hearting the facts whereas it is picking up the trends okay which means it is trying to understand what's really happening here and it is actually converting that fact into a logic so there is a logic involved here which is it is actually translating it into machine uh, or mathematical equations so in in the end it is all mathematical equations so you'll have to uh, tie everything or stitch everything to a mathematical equation and that mathematical equation 
or an expression is able to define the relationship between the data okay so given these 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 scenarios let's say xyz scenarios what will be a probable outcome okay that if you can define with a mathematical equation that is exactly what machine learning is so you feed the historical data and then the model tries to uh, learn from that data and then builds a mathematical complex mathematical equation and that mathematical equation is able to predict for the future inputs what's the output going to be okay that's exactly what it is and it's definitely not rote learning or memorization so it's not that a machine is learning okay if this happened uh, uh, for example let's say if, if rcb is playing with kkr uh, uh, you know in bangalore uh, with certain players on the team a and team b side who's going to win so it's not going to remember all the past uh, 14 15 matches or 20 matches that each of the teams have played against each other uh, versus it's actually looking at the data based on the players the playing condition all these factors are actually converted into mathematical equation so now that you all you have to do is feed the new data and it just passes through the mathematical equation then gives you the output okay now the important part is it's not a fixed mathematical equation so let's say if the dynamics of the uh, data change okay the model also learns by itself okay that's the beauty of machine learning which means it's not a fixed algorithm that it is going to be based on the data you can always retrain can always adapt and then improvise the algorithm okay you can always change the mathematical equation you can always ab update the mathematical equation based on the dynamics of the data which means if the arrangements of the data change let's say in the past rcb has been winning for a long time versus kkr now I'm just taking a cricket example so that it is slightly easier to understand but it could be any other scenario also right now if in the in the more recent times if because of the playing conditions and also the you know uh, coach of the team and uh, the morale of the team if it is the fact that kkr is has been winning more it means that in the near future the model will automatically pick up this trend and then also predict based on the latest conditions so that kind of learning or updates in the learning can actually happen in the machine learning so now the question is how is um, how is machine learning different from artificial intelligence so artificial intelligence as i said is focused more on the actions part of it so given a scenario what should be the probable action that a system can take okay with its intelligence that is mostly the artificial intelligence versus what is a machine learning machine learning is going to predict on a given scenario if this is what has happened and you you give a new scenario machine learning is probably able to predict that this is probably going to be your new output it just forecasts the data okay it just forecasts a new possibility versus artificial intelligence focuses on taking some action okay it has to really take some action at that point so um, i'll actually give a certain examples and also uh, clarify this a bit later so you can uh, you know easily think like this so if you are teaching a child to identify the difference between dogs and cats so for example if, if a newborn child uh, or maybe a six months old baby or one year old baby uh, if the baby is trying to understand the difference between two animals two pet animals which is cats and dogs how will the baby learn the baby has to first figure out and then keep looking at these different uh, uh, sets of animals right so it is looking at let's say 10 or 14 dogs okay and then there are some seven or eight cats it has take take you know the baby has looked at different dogs and different cats and every time it looks at the dog it understands that this is slightly a big animal when compared to cat and it has a different sound when it makes when compared to cat and the kinds of ears that it it has the kinds of the kind of tail it has the kind of body texture it has the kind of face face uh, uh, attributes that the dog has is suddenly different from a cat okay and that is how the baby is actually so it's going one feature by feature and then it's trying to understand how a dog moves how a dog barks uh, how uh, you know uh, uh, how a dog looks in general it's trying to identify each of these features from these um, uh, you know animals and then trying to differentiate that with a cat and then that's how it's able to identify that it's a dog or a cat and then uh, you know eventually the 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 child the child will actually learn that this is a dog versus this is a cat okay that's exactly how it happens okay which means humans use texture color shape proportion features all of these features to actually learn okay in fact that's how we've all been learning 
uh, through our childhood okay and then of course uh, i mean we started from that journey okay and similarly you can think of machine learning also is some doing something similar so machine learning employs a variety of strategies right so it is looking at different sorts of combinations in the data for example if an image of a dog and a cat is given to a machine learning model what information can it get from the image of a dog and what information can it get from an image of a cat okay and based on this how can it understand and then classify whether this is going to be a dog so let's say if the machine learning model is also trying to classify a pictures of a dog and a cat uh, it is learning from let's say hundreds or 200s or 500000 pictures of dogs and cats and then let's say if you provide a new photo now new picture of an animal it will be able to classify whether it's a dog or a cat based on the historical data that it has seen based on the based on the uh you know thousand photos that it has actually seen uh, in the past while training from the data okay so uh, that's exactly what machine learning is so now examples of machine learning and artificial intelligence in the real world scenario uh, is actually for example a fraud detection scenario so in banking systems these days if there is a fraudulent transaction happening it's not just bank right it can the fraudulent transaction can be anywhere but if there is a uh, for example the fraudulent transaction can be ordering a food online ordering a uh, in a product online uh, and then let's say faking that that it is a you know uh, uh, you know genuine product but when you receive it it's a fraudulent product or let's say if the customer themselves are actually receiving the product and then actually creating a fraud case so there are so many scenarios actually with the internet uh, you know and then online deliveries these days there is a possible fraud with uh, uh, so many systems right and then can you detect beforehand that there is going to be a fraud using machine learning of course a lot of companies these days are actually impl- you know uh, you know using this and then uh, and then definitely in banking systems and especially where uh, money and transactions are involved a fraudulent transaction if it is detected early or if there is a pattern that is happening from let's say certain location certain customer or certain area that definitely helps uh, the company or whoever is actually uh, uh, working with that business to manage that you know much much better okay so customer targeting for example if i am a imdb user if i am a book my show user uh, or if i am a let's say cricket fan or if i am based on whatever likes or dislikes of uh, a particular uh, person you can act, the companies can actually do the customer targeting so basically they'll give you the kind of products that you like the kind of let's say if i am a organic product you know user and there are new organic products all, all available in the market then probably they know that this user is already uh, focusing on buying more organic products so let's you know give give them certain option to uh, purchase and then also give them incentive so that this guy can actually purchase more products with us okay that's one way of doing it so if i'm a pizza lover then or let's say a burger lover then it it's possible that the pizza company already is looking at the previous transactions and let's say every sunday or let's say every alternative sundays within a month i'm ordering pizza online so it means that they know that uh, this is a pattern that has actually established so if i'm not ordering let's say this weekend then they'll probably give an option to uh, it, they'll probably give some good offers so that these are uh, you know tempting for me to buy a pizza so just saying that customer targeting is also very popular these days all these companies are actually employing machine learning to do that and then also product recommendation so which means let's say if i'm buying a laptop uh, online if anybody is actually buying a laptop online it also means that uh, there is a potential uh, s- a sale for laptop bag also right so along with the laptop you will definitely need a case to hand carry so uh, all these uh, online platforms for example any e-commerce shopping website if you go the immediate recommendation is the nice uh, fitting uh, you know laptop carrying case or a bag uh, already recommended for you so if i am buying a mobile or if anybody is buying a mobile online typically the mobile cover and the screen guard and everything else that is needed for it is automatically recommended so those things are automatically taken care of so which means all the people who have actually bought mobile you are also increasing the sales for the you know supplement devices for that or any uh, similar product that is actually needed or a recommended product along with it uh, that is needed so if i am buying let's say groceries then uh, if i am buying let's say uh, co- cooking oil then typically along with the cooking oil you'll also need some wheat flour or anything else okay so those things are also started uh, you know recommending these days uh, for all the kinds of uh, Uh, product recommendations so i'm just giving some simple f- examples but you can also imagine the complicated examples and then 
much more complicated scenarios that's also there so for example if i'm buying a red t-shirt what suit what kind of jeans uh, you know should, would go uh, uh, good with it so uh, for that the similar pattern uh, or the nice contrast you know uh, dresses will be recommended uh, you know for a top or a bottom uh, scenario in the apparel world also so that also is a product recommendation so real time industrial monitoring is also uh, very popular these days all the you know uh, traditional factory uh, and then let's say assembly lines so typically these car assembly lines these days uh, take any cars uh, manufacturer uh, if they know beforehand it's going to give them much much better advantage for example uh, if let's say um, so these typically these car makers what they do is they have uh, hundreds of uh, product suppliers so uh, mahindra car does not make tires okay mahindra car just makes cars okay so the tire is actually supplied by some company and brakes are supplied by some other company and chassis is supplied by some other company all these components are actually supplied for uh, by different vendors and they purchase them in bulk and then all of them will be uh, gotten into the factory uh, where the assembly is actually happening and they fit them all together when the car is actually assembled okay and this is not just one car right they are actually doing it in sequence let's say every day 500 cars are actually made or produced so if imagine that one of the components is actually wrongly sent okay if the dy dimensions of a, a brake system is actually not right it is off by 2 cm then it means that it's not going to fit well and then it's going to create a crackling sound right which means the customer cannot or the uh, uh, the a manufacturer cannot go ahead and then build the car for that day so which means potentially 500 cars are not produced on that day if it continues for let's say three days then it means 1500 cars are not produced for the continuous three days imagine if you are able to detect this early okay then you can prevent such things from happening with machine learning and of course there are a lot of algorithms typically there are cameras fit and these cameras are actually sending live data to the machine learning models and machine learning model is continuously looking at these uh, products or vendors uh, vendor products all these small components that are actually received and if there is any fault in the product it's automatically identified beforehand so that you can immediately take some action and then give a call okay so all these quality checks and then anything that is needed for industrial monitoring is actually happening much much earlier than doing it later okay so there is of course uh, uh, you know definitely a lot of growth here but typically that's how machine learning is also applied in real time industrial monitoring uh, just one example but you can imagine all the different factories and then uh, anywhere else also it's uh, similarly applicable so along with it there is sentiment analysis uh, all these uh, uh, social media campaigns and anything that's actually uh, 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 whether it's a positive sentiment negative sentiment because of covid it uh, there is a lot of um, uh, chaos and then also people are struggling to uh, find oxygen and then let's say bed supplies and all of the other things right so then there is actually sentiment building because we are uh, uh, we are living in a society and then there is you know individual opinions that are forming and then all of these sentiments so what's the sentiment like and then based on that uh, all the relevant bodies can actually take action so this is actually helpful and then analyzing sentiments for political campaigns and any other stuff also is actually happening these days and in fact there is also a lot of data collection happening on the sentiment analysis so text analysis text analytics is also a, a very uh, popular field all these um, i don't know how many of you have actually experimented but typically if you write on a, a tablet device these days uh, with a stylus you'll your handwriting is automatically recognized and that handwriting is actually converted into uh, english text automatically by these applications so def there uh, a, a sophisticated uh, nlp natural language processing algorithm is sitting and then doing the text analytics so this is actually a very very um, uh, aggressively growing field and a lot of work is actually happening in text analytics so medical diagnosis uh, again cancer detection diabetes detection or any kind of uh, complex diseases right which which actually are more fatal and then uh, if detected early you can take better actions especially with cancer diabetes and diabetes is of course uh, treatable but of course uh, advanced stages of diabetes is also difficult but cancer if detected early it, it definitely helps uh, save a lot of lives i think that's where machine learning is being employed by a lot of uh, uh, industries and also a lot of companies are investing and in fact a lot of universities are also investing a lot of uh, research here 
bring a lot of research here along with the medical fraternity to uh, come up with better you know diagnosis and you know, there are actually facts that um, i think a couple of companies have uh, uh, come out and said that stanford algorithms and a couple of other algorithms are able to detect the diabetes and cancer uh, even before the patient was completely healthy and there was no anomaly at all like a normal physical examination from radiology or any other doctor was not able to pick up but machine learning model suggested that this patient in next two years will probably have diabetes and it in fact turned out to be true so there are these examples that are actually coming out these days that it's going to uh, predict even much with much more greater accuracy because there is also data from the you know uh, previous history right so you'll you'll feed the data from past from all the patients that have actually gone through these uh, tests and then you take the test data and then feed it to the machine learning model it is trying to identify the patterns in the data looking at the images of all the tests and then also certain other factors that you can you know include in that image recognition is again a very very important topic these days uh, uh, i don't know how many of uh, you have actually uh, come across this but uh, all these uh, traffic ca cameras that are actually installed in most of the states these days are capable of actually reading the number plates of the vehicles automatically even if your vehicle is moving it is able to predict and then identify the numbers with greater accuracy so whether you can write it in different fonts or different kinds of number plates different color it doesn't matter it's able to identify the number plate automatically so the image recognition is actually heavily employed uh, in uh, traffic signals and uh, uh, in in a lot of other places also the chatbots is again a very uh, popular thing any website that you visit these days you will have a chatbot available so which means automated system uh, typically there used to be ivr systems on call so if you call let's say railway helpline or any other helpline you used to have a system talking to you these days there are chatbots available on all the applications in fact on the mobile applications also any mobile app you open there are chatbots available which will take your request they'll ask some basic questions based on the kind of answer you respond and there are different questions asked to different users so all of this is actually automated and some sort some level of machine learning is also applied here this is on the ml side so on the artificial intelligence side you can actually think of self driving cars uh, so in fact there are self driving cars tesla is one of the popular example that is actually available in the united states of america a uh, game playing algorithms for example i don't know how many of you have heard of google uh, alpha go game which is actually and google's deep mind uh, algorithm is actually uh, you know learn chess in 4 hours and then beat the uh, international uh, winner uh, of chess uh, you know in let's say 4 to 5 hours so which means it has not learned anything about chess you give it 4 hours or 5 hours it is able to understand all the moves and then beat the best player uh, in the world with its own uh, intelligence okay so which means it's able to understand and make the moves and take actions okay so you can uh, clearly see the difference here all of this is actually just the forecast on the on one side on the other side if you see artificial intelligence self driving cars game playing algorithms and robotics it is more action oriented so this is exactly the difference here so for example if you are at a traffic signal the, the camera's job first is to let's say identify and take right pictures and then send this data to the machine learning algorithm the machine learning algorithm detects whether it is uh, let's say your car in fact your car also has sensors and cameras now it is able to detect the signal okay that there is a traffic red light signal it stops there okay or the machine learning model is telling that there is a red signal okay and there is a forecast that it's going to let's say in next 300 meters you will probably see a red signal okay now this is a image recognition part that the machine learning model has identified now the next thing is can the uh, artificial intelligence algorithm within the car automatically stop the car apply brakes automatically without you telling it which is artificial intelligence part so action oriented uh, you know a uh, task is basically uh, something that artificial intelligence focuses on whereas prediction oriented task is something machine learning focuses on okay so i i hope this distinction is clear with you as to what machine learning is and what is artificial intelligence is so uh, in in a broader category right so machine learning and i think the area of interest for us should be to begin with machine learning because this is something that is uh, doable because if you have the access to data of any of the use cases and then you know what sort of algorithm you can apply you can typically solve any data related problem with machine learning okay and in a broader category machine learning is classified into three sections okay one is a unsupervised machine learning okay and there is a supervised machine learning if you see here there are three categories that are actually highlighted so there is unsupervised machine learning 
there is supervised machine learning and there is a reinforcement learning so there are three major classes that are there in machine learning world okay uh, so to begin with let's start with supervised machine learning so supervised machine learning is nothing but uh, here you already know the input and output of all the scenarios okay so whether it is weather forecasting or market forecasting population growth, growth prediction estimating the life expectancy of the patients or users or whether it is fraud detection image classification everywhere you already know the inputs of the use case and you also know what was the output for that use case uh, so which means a given scenario uh, you already know what is the input and what is the output that has happened in the past so now the condition is that you give a new input for that the machine learning will predict a new output okay so which means when the input and outputs both are known to the model that becomes a supervised machine learning technique as the name itself says supervised meaning it is i'm already supervising what has actually happened based on the input this was actually the output okay so you know what the outcome was okay in the past based on the input data and you provide a new input data so that the model can forecast for that new input okay that's a, that is mostly on the supervised machine learning side on the unsupervised machine learning side you don't know the output here all you know is just the input data okay so for example uh, let's say if i am giving you the sales history of uh, a flipkart website for last one month okay what does it mean so if flipkart uh, is selling let's say uh, 150 crore products in last one month the let's say uh, 25 crore products are actually from appliances department whether it is washing machine air cooler ac or something and then let's say 50 crore products on uh, electronics which is let's say mobile uh, or laptop or uh, anything some of that sort and let's say remaining 30 to 40 crores from uh, uh, maybe uh, apparel which is uh, clothes or uh, you know uh, cookware or kitchenware and then the remaining products is actually groceries okay so if i give you this number now uh, since there are vast products right there are 150 crore products that have actually sold in the last one month how can you segregate this data here there is no output there is just sales history there is just data provided to you now what can you do is just segregate this data and then classify them into you know separate sections the advantage of this is now you can actually know uh, that again within the uh, let's say mobile world itself uh, within the smartphone world itself so maybe there are 40 crore uh, smartphones sold in the last one month okay so which means um, among those 40 crore smartphones that are sold in on flipkart how many of them are actually let's say uh, i'm just giving a rough number how many of them are let's say in between the price range 15 to 25000 so how many people have actually bought a smartphone in the price range 15 to 25000 if you know this pattern then you can also predict in the future how many people will actually buy again in the next month okay in the upcoming month how many phones will be sold in this price range so flipkart can actually ac accordingly adjust and then give some nice offers based on it but for that to happen you actually need to segregate this data and then put it somewhere separately right so you'll have to see this data separately from all the other transactions that have happened that is exactly where the data segregation happens so you cluster the data into separate groups then you can form recommender systems targeted marketing customer segmentation all of these actually can happen based on the unsupervised machine learning now the third part is actually reinforcement learning okay so um, reinforcement learning is um, is is kind of a mixed bag okay where you exactly don't know what the output is okay but it will give you some you know pointers so for example uh, uh, so all these gaming systems that are there or anything that is actually uh, dependent on let's say uh, temporary input so our human uh, human brain actually works with reinforcement learning so we don't know the exact output so we take a step and then we see whether it is a feasible outcome or not okay based on the uh, you know feedback that we get with the immediate action we have taken we tend to improvise whether we, whether we are saying this is a favorable condition or not a favorable condition. So for example, if I have to go from, let's say Banchankri to Majestic, okay? And then if I'm taking a route, okay? If I'm taking from, I'm just taking one example. Okay, we're not Bangalore. Let's take, if I have to go from Bangalore to Hubli, 
so i am taking a dist, uh, you know single route and then driving by car or a bus okay and let's say if i start from tumkur or chitradurga i go until there and then uh, i am supposed to make a deviation let's say if i don't make a deviation and if i travel let's say for 50 kilometers then i know that i am going in a wrong direction so somebody i ask somebody there and then they tell me that no no you are actually in the wrong direction you have to take a u turn go back go back to chitradurga and then again from there there is a separate deviation for hubli okay so if this is actually told to me then what i did was i took a step there i went 50 kilometers ahead i know that this is the wrong direction or i got to know that it's wrong direction now i have to penalize so i have to take a u turn come back and then take again going back to the separate steps this is exactly what happens in reinforcement learning so every time you take a step you are actually either rewarding that step or penalizing that step so which means you either tell that this is a favorable outcome or it's a not favorable or, or it's unfavorable to you so based on that the feedback mechanism that you are continuously learning from each step the machine learning model will actually learn and then in term it will uh, finally it will be able to predict in the future okay that's exactly how it works so of course it doesn't give you the exact output it will give you some some kind of a pointer whether it is a, a favorable or a unfavorable outcome okay that's exactly what reinforcement learning is so there are these three broad classifications of machine learning okay and uh, so as i said there are different problem classifications so whether it is um, uh, for example spam emails filtering so if you have a spam email received or if you are doing a sentiment analysis or a fraud detection for customer all of these are classification based problems okay which which is it's a yes or no problem okay whether it is uh, a, a spam email or a not a spam a spam email okay you are doing a customer ad targeting whether this is a customer whom should we a uh, sell our product or not sell our product uh, or even event discovery whether it's going to happen an event is going to happen or not happen so all of this is actually classification based problem whether it's a yes or no kind of questions is basically a classification whether it is that or this the model will predict either ways okay whether it will tell this will happen or not happen this is a spam email or not a spam email uh, now regression is basically focusing on a real valued output for example if the stock price of uh, you know reliance jio today is 400 rupees what's going to be the stock price of reliance jio share market uh, tomorrow whether it's going to be 410 rupees or 390 rupees it depends on the regression kind of so you look at the past history and certain actions that reliance company is taking today or in the last one week that decides what's going to be the future value so machine the machine learning model will predict accordingly the value will either go upwards or downwards based on the Uh, parameters that it has learned so recommendation engine is again uh, something that you see uh, for example job uh, recruiting uh, product recommendation all of those is actually a recommendation uh, kind of uh, uh, problem so imputation is one other case where if you have insufficient data how can you increase the number of data points using machine learning techniques so that's also different kind of problem so the you classify the problem type whenever you see and then accordingly you can employ different sorts of machine learning algorithms based on the things that we have actually discovered in the previous slide which is whether it's a supervised unsupervised or semi supervised which is reinforcement based on this category you actually fig figure out the problem what kind of problem it is then you can decide what kind of algorithm can be applied on this so a simple example that i was talking about earlier is this okay so you have if you have a, uh, a machine learning model which is doing a prediction for dogs and cats you feed certain training data the machine learning process actually learns from that data and then there is a model built so this model is basically a, a complex mathematical equation that is built and then when you are sending the unlabeled test data so here if you see you are not telling whether it's a dog or a cat you are just sending the photos okay and the model predicts whether it's a dog or a cat and of course the one thing that i want to highlight here is this so if you see here it is not always predicting the right result there is always possibility that it will predict wrong results it's actually uh, you know a cat but it is predicted as dog so there is always errors in machine learning because based on the kind of data the kind of information that the model has learned it can actually learn wrong or not learn completely uh, 100% right so this, these things can always happen and uh, you one has to account for it okay all right so uh okay so so which means uh, the the important necessary part here is to understand that 
based on the uh, data that it has actually seen in the past, the model is actually learning from it. So the model is the uh, mathematical equation is built from the past data, and then it's able to recall that process when you are trying to predict for the future data. Okay, a simple way of classifying. So unsupervised example, this is what I was saying. So let's say if you have groups of data, uh, something like this, the algorithm considers that data uh, or consumes the data and then tries to classify them into separate groups. So these um, arrow marks that you see here could be, uh, or the triangles could be, let's say electronic products, the diamonds could be, let's say apparel products and circles could be appliances and home department products for a website, okay? And this is what the algorithm is able to classify. So a typical workflow is the historical data is provided. Features are actually created from the historical data. So features are basically uh, your data is telling something and that data is actually considered as feature. So you create new features from different uh, datas, uh, different columns of data that you receive. Based on that, the model is actually building uh, the mathematical logic, okay? And using that logic, it is always evaluating. So the important part is the, the cycle that you see here. The model builds, it evaluates, and then it optimizes itself, okay? So this is the important piece of it. Every time it looks at the feature, it will try to evaluate with the test data. If the evaluation is not going correctly, it will try to improvise its value. Okay, this continuously happens every time you give a fresh data or if you give an increased data set, it is always going to learn and then, you know, become better. Okay, that's actually the crux of machine learning. Um, okay, so this I can skip. I think so some of the terminologies used if I if you were to understand is basically uh, when you start getting more specific into the machine learning model, these are some of the terminologies used, which is what's a target and what's a uh, you know, label versus what are features and what's a model, uh, what's the training data and what is supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning. So I'm just keeping this as the uh, last slide. Uh, just in case if you have any questions, uh, I can take them uh, at this point or you can actually go through this slide. Uh, Pavitra, ma'am, Malari, sir, I am done from my end. If there are any questions of, from any students or lecturers, we can address them now. Sir. Sir? Yes. Hello. Shashi, sir. Uh, yes, madam. Any, any questions? Uh, anything you will uh, just. Uh, uh, sir. Uh, Shashi, sir, wants to ask some questions. Sir, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Is huh, it sir. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. We, Go ahead. We can hear you, sir. Pankaj, sir. It's my personal uh, question according to the analysis of the machine learning. Nowadays, uh, since from 2019, no, everything we are going for the automation with the help of the machine learning as well as the artificial intelligence as well as the deep learning. Mm -hmm. If you do in each and every domain the automation after five years, okay, in the future after the five years, what our students should learn in the uh, domain of the computers because each and everything will be given vision by the machine itself okay for simple example i can give in the google no? nowadays it will check the glamour, grammar also at that time if the machine is providing if the app is providing each and everything is correcting by the application it's an app itself at that time human be human being will be becoming day by la day lazy but in the competitive world how yeah he has to improve himself, sir. Okay, so yeah, I think I, I get your question. So uh, this is not, so one thing is, see machine learning, uh, for, actually I think this was the same question. Like if I, let's let's go 20 years back. I'll, I'll try to answer this slightly differently. First we'll address, I'll take actually uh, a, a separate question and then try to see uh, um, what we can you know refer from that and then come back and answer your question. Okay. So let's say 20 years back, if we went and then asked somebody uh, because of all this uh, web development that is happening and then so many applications coming on the internet, what will these bank employees do? Okay, because this is exactly was the problem. All these banking systems actually had, uh, let's say for 10 or 15 cashiers and then they have big, big offices where they were managing all these transactions, right? Now with the internet, you will see that banks are still there there are uh, employees still working on uh, in the banks but they are actually working on a sophisticated computing device which is actually handling the transaction 
and it is giving you all the flexibility so for example even even when we have uh, internet systems uh and then most of the people are able to do internet banking there are still people who are actually going to the bank for certain services and there are some mat- mandatory services that are you know still recommended that people actually go to banks and then uh, execute them physically only okay so likewise uh, which means that yes of course so has uh, uh, all these banking softwares taken the job f- from some of the potential bank employees that that could have been employed yes because with banking systems you don't need 15 cashiers no you only need 3 or 4 cashiers in a bank okay so which means there is potential reduction in the jobs and then it is of course making the job of those cashiers on a day to day basis much much easier they don't have to worry because all they have to do is look at the transaction if the transaction is successful on the computer system that's all they have to look at imagine the pains taking effort that people used to take 15 or 20 years ago when this internet banking was not available okay where they had to still manually enter do all the calculation and then update in the system and this ledgers were supposed to be maintained physical copies of ledgers and that somebody has to actually take them then load it to the central server so all of this things actually existed before so uh, something similar you can also expect from in the near future also so the current systems that are there i know that I, and i think 5 year is too optimistic if i in my opinion yeah. uh, in let's say next 15 to 20 years there is definitely a possibility of automation so which means uh, i think at least these guys the folks uh, of this generation will spend good enough time actually converting the manual systems into automated systems okay that will definitely happen and once that happens i think with automation also there are there are going to be newer challenges okay so for example these yeah. days people talk about sustainability people talk about renewable energy people talk about let's say uh, uh, let's say space programs uh like if you see i think um, spacex or even uh, blue origin and other companies are talking about uh, let's say uh, intraplanetary uh, you know space yeah. travel so yeah. i mean i mean the problems of that generation let's say 15 or 20 years from now will be entirely different uh, and who knows let's say if the uh, reducing the carbon footprint itself is one big challenge these days reducing yeah. the emission emissions these days let's now now there are natural disasters that are happening how can you avoid with Uh, or at least predict or then take some actions using technology can you provide better transportation or avoid pollution let's say battery operated vehicles i mean there are so many avenues that are there and i think uh, see with or without uh, people learning machine learning there is definitely going to be a you know advancement that is happening okay i think it's always good to uh, go with the ride and then understand where it takes you uh, and then be prepared for the you know Uh, uh present generation challenges is what i w- i would say okay because i am e- even in today's world with all of the technology that we have we still have so many uh, unresolved issues for example covid pandemic pandemic is one good example to talk about so mm. there are so many things even today we are not able to manage the bed allocation and with so much technology right imagine we can we are able to manage 1000 crore transactions much easily but we are not able to manage only 1000 beds properly per day okay yeah, yeah, allocation yeah. of 1000 beds properly so you can yeah. understand how complex these things can get and i think uh, uh, there are always so technology can always solve problems if you are looking in the right direction thank you sir okay any other questions any questions sir suppose if you want to build an application sir which one is uh, better to choose sir either ai or uh, ml sir the applications can be built without ai or ml also so uh, i i mean i don't know what application you had in your mind Do- domain sir, means uh, ai domain is better or ml sir so uh, i think uh, ai domain is slightly challenging because it needs a lot of sophistication in terms of it's as i said ai is action oriented system right if you want an action oriented system you need to have full fledged functionality made available for an ai whereas uh, for machine learning uh, if you have enough data and then if you know the right algorithms to work on i think it's it's a good uh, good starting point is what i would say so you can start with machine learning and if you solve more you can build an end to end system and make it like a ai system with actionable intelligence also 
ओके सर थैंक यू सर श्योर नो प्रॉब्लम okay uh, you can still reach out to us uh, i think malari sir will be definitely available to you guys uh, all the time uh, i we can close this call for now but any questions you can reach reach to us offline and we'll still be able to answer those questions if there are no questions maybe we can call it today any questions from faculties or students If the participants are having any queries, you can post the queries to the Ramakrishna sir. Okay, sir. And you know, we will happily say that you know more than around uh, three thousand plus uh, interns were there last year for uh, AIML uh, in Tech Fortune. so ramkrishna sir only thought more than 1000 students yes, uh, especially on this technology if anybody interested to you know work on this you know we are always uh, welcome okay thank you everyone i'll stop sharing but we'll be uh, there for a couple of more minutes if just in case if you have questions any participant is having any queries you can post the queries to the ramakrishna sir pavitra ma'am i am yes, audible sir. <clears throat> yes sir uh, if no queries is there you can proceed ma'am malikarjun sir yes sir shall i conclude yes yeah, sir you can conclude Uh, good evening to one and all i dr s h angdi hod of computer science and engineering rural engineering college ulkoti uh, i am uh, very glad to give a vote of thanks to the webinar series conducted by the uh, tech fortune with uh, our college association uh, on behalf of uh, management especially secretary honorable secretary sachin patil rangu patil and uh, deepu gowda patil and uh, the key instrumental for arranging these kind of an webinar series by giving an all the support uh, to us is our uh, beloved principal dr v m patil and all the faculty members uh, who have given an a lot of uh, strain to arrange all these kind of an webinar series with the mallikarjuna sir uh, i am thankful to the uh, today's uh, speaker resource person uh, shri ramakrishna potdar uh, who has given an uh, insight and uh, depth in knowledge and uh, taken our journey so happy that since from the semiconductor technology and uh, what kind of an uh, advancement is there in an semiconductor technology how we are going to be making an advancement in the processor technology and the device technology and which has made our computing system so this sophisticated and uh, empowered in the case of an uh, processing uh, who has uh, taken us uh, an uh, from the background till the processing uh, ways and uh, and when we have an so much of uh, this uh, desktop uh, systems and a desktop applications with respect to the web based application and how the computing system have been made us to make an automation system 
with the help of an <clears throat> ai and an ml emerging and he has given an in depth uh, this an uh, clarification that why an ai and ml is going to be emerged in order to give the solution to the uh, data which is going to be abundantly available with us and how when uh, this kind of an uh, machine learning is going to be helping uh, by giving an uh, prediction oriented with respect to the ai as an action oriented and he has given an, a lot of examples uh, about an uh, how when uh, this an ai is going to be used in an application like an self driving car and a game playing and robotic and at the same time the prediction oriented uh, this machine learning uh, given a lot of example like an rcb with a K, uh, this a kkr and forecasting of a data customer uh, this on uh, template uh, templating recommendation of the system prediction of the system and text analysis medical analysis image recognition number plate recognition chart boards and classification regression representation he has covered a lot of things because i know that as an uh, i have completed my phd in an image processing uh, how difficult to give an uh, explanation of all these kind of an uh, supervised learning and supervised learning and about a reinforce a reinforcement learning he has taken a journey so fantastic for us that all of us we have enjoyed with the real time example uh, ramakrishna podar sir has uh, taken us and we are happy that uh, he has given an uh, clear information about an um, ai and ml introduction uh where it is a toughest job to cover all these kind of an issues in the one session only but sir has made a lot of effort to give that kind of an uh, explanation to us and to all our students and uh, on behalf of all my participants nearly 300 and plus participants have been uh, uh, encountered into our uh, this on uh, webinar series uh, you have given an uh, very good knowledge and given an avenues for us and i hope that on behalf of all my participant we will go through the ai and ml projects sir and definitely your presentation will help us to go in depth about an artificial intelligence and machine learning sir thank you thank you one and all and on my humble request is stay home stay safe because in this kind of an pandemic situation you are going to be take care of yourself and have a nice day thank you thank you one and all thank you sir ma'am uh, i request uh, all the participants to give the feedback and the feedback link has been posted on in the comment section so do give your valuable feedback everyone thank you malkarjun sir thank you uh, ramakrishna sir thank you for your uh, val uh, this uh, uh, valuable time with us for sharing your knowledge sir thank you thank you sir